One of the men seemingly behind the muslimvote.co.uk is a former leader of a now banned terrorist organization who wants there to be a global Islamic state and thinks integration is bad. Mohammed Jalal has publicly stated that he is involved in the Muslim vote. It is a website that sprang up after the October 7th Hamas terror attack in Israel. Its stated aim is to put so-called Muslim issues at the forefront and to back as many independent candidates as possible at the next election. They have several high-profile MPs in their sights. Now, these include Shadow Foreign Sec David Lamy, Shadow Health Secretary Wes Streeting and Shadow Justice Secretary Shabana Mahmood. The government, or the movement I should say, began after the so-called Party of Islam was rejected by the Electoral Commission, although this may simply be a coincidence. GB News can reveal that Mohammed Jalal changed his name from Jalaluddin Patel and that he was the leader of the UK wing of the now-banned terrorist organisation Hizbut Tahrir between the years of 2000 and 2007. He was the leader of the group when the 7-7 bombings took place in 2005 and when then Prime Minister Tony Blair said he wanted the group to be banned. He has called for a global Islamic state, saying in 2004, Muslims are acknowledging more and more that the governments of America and the West are enemies of Islam and do not wish to see them prosper. The call for the establishment of a global Islamic state holds currency in almost every city in the Muslim world. He added, plans are being made east and west for this Muslim world. Mr. Jalal has appeared in the past to want to topple our current society and replace it with an Islamic one. He told a Hizbut Tahrir conference in 2007, we from Hizbut Tahrir believe passionately that true liberation will come to the Muslim world when we dispense with these ruling elites and these Western inspired systems. And in their place, we establish Islam through state and society. It may well be concerning for people to learn then that Mr. Jalal tweeted in December, I am pleased to announce a project we've been working on. A united group of organisations have come together and launched the Muslim Vote. The website states that it has significant financial and legal resources and provides a list of target seats displaying how the local MP voted in relation to the Gaza ceasefire and the percentage of Muslims living in that constituency. Mr Jalal does not appear to want integration between Muslims and wider society and doesn't appear to think peaceful cooperation is possible until the British government outlines a contract with the Muslim community. He is quoted in The Guardian as saying, The whole discussion of integration is a front for coercive assimilation, and no more than an assertion of Western values as being superior. The first step for community cohesion is for there to be an open debate about the nature of a contract between the government and the Muslim community. The government has not clearly spelled out what the terms of this relationship should be in order to facilitate acceptance and peaceful coexistence. Mr. Jalal describes himself as a political scientist and is reportedly developing a course for the Sapiens Institute founded by an individual called Mohammed Hijab, who has been accused of anti-Semitism and stirring up hate, claims he no doubt denies. This is Mohammed Hijab. However, when, the, when those Zionists came in with their dogs, that was, an, that, that was an act of provocation. So what we're saying now, and I'm making it very clear so everyone understands, if those dogs come close to us again, we will see it as an act of aggression and we will kill those dogs. Mr. Jalal has since tried to distance himself from his involvement with the Muslim vote, saying he has only collected data for the organisation. GB News has approached Mr. Jalal and the themuslimvote.co.uk on several occasions. We have asked for clarification as to what is meant by, quote, Muslim issues. We have asked who funds the group and who is affiliated with it. We have not yet received any response. We have also asked Mr. Jalal directly if he would like to clarify any of the points made in this report and we have invited him on the show. That invite still stands. Now, it is obviously for each individual watching or listening to this broadcast now to make their own minds up as to whether they think this is all above board and fine in a democratic society or whether or not there is a concerted and shady attempt to infiltrate British politics and society from a group of seemingly hardline radicals with extreme views. Mohammed Jalal claimed to the Mail on Sunday. 
that he only helped the Muslim vote with data collection and he denied being its founder. He also said he was no longer a member of his Uttaria and added, I am neither affiliated with the Muslim vote campaign nor an organiser. I certainly value their efforts to hold advocates of genocide to account and encourage Muslims to constructively engage politically. Let's get the thoughts of my panel tonight now, and I'm joined by GB News presenter Nana Queer. I've got Conservative Deputy Chairman, the one and only James Daly MP, and author and broadcaster Amy Nicole Turner. Nana, mm, I think there are some serious questions to answer as to whether or not our political system is about to be or is being infiltrated by extreme Islamists. Well, I, I, I think you're spot on. I thought your monologue was very good. Uh, I think the problem with this is that many of the Muslims um, come from the, where, the regimes that they have in their country. So a lot of the regimes in uh, other Muslim countries are political, religious, totalitarian regimes. Mm. Or, if you look at Saudi Arabia, is actually an Islamic theocracy. And that simply means that um, other lesser minorities religions cannot be practiced openly so Islam is the religion there now I think that despite the fact that uh, a lot of the Muslims come from places like this where this is the regime they know our system is a democracy and of course they're weaponizing our democracy against us that's how I see it it's a numbers game mm. which is why of course um, the suggestion that uh, they should try and take 55 of the seats from the MPs who called for a ceasefire mm. or uh, abstain from voting for one um, and I, I see that as a concern because if you think of there's 650 MPs 55 of those that's about eight or nine percent around about there mm. that is that is almost capturing our political system and there are others so for example there are 31 marginal seats mm. and those seats could yeah. make be defining yeah, I mean it, it could have a massive bearing yeah. at the next election and also just going forward politically in, in this country James you know, I've got to 